How did our website get over a million visitors and double our revenue in just one year? I'm going to answer this and much more in this video. I'll show you the first step that led to this amazing growth, which is effective keyword research. Whether you're a beginner or expert, I'm sure that you'll get something valuable from our journey. Effective keyword research is not just about finding the right words to use. It's also about a whole bunch of other things. I've arranged this video into three steps that you should do one by one so please watch the full video, otherwise don't blame me later if something doesn't work out for you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Rohan Francis and I make these videos so your business can grow and when you need the best website security, you think of us. Step 1. How to find high value keywords We need to brainstorm seed keywords, which are specific terms that define your niche. Like just think about what words people type into Google to find what you offer. For example, if you sell coffee and coffee making equipment, your seed keywords might include coffee, cold coffee, coffee mug, etc. Keep brainstorming till you have at least 10 to 20 seed keywords. If you get stuck, you can use this free keyword generator. Just enter a seed keyword and you'll get a whole bunch of ideas. Next, we'll see which seed keywords your competitors rank for. Just search Google for one of your seed keywords and see who appears on the front page of the results. If you see huge brands like Amazon or the New York Times ranking for your seed keyword, you should not treat them as competitors. Always look for websites that resemble your own or where you're trying to take it. Once you've identified a few competitors, use a tool like this one to see which pages bring them the most traffic and what keywords they're targeting. Like this. You can see each page's top keyword which is sending it the most traffic. By repeating this process for several competitors, you'll build up a good list of relevant keyword ideas. At this stage, it's important to focus on quantity rather than quality and you can refine this list later on. Now, after we have a big list of keywords ready, we need to analyze the value of these keywords and shortlist the best ones. How to analyze and prioritize keywords? We need to select a certain number of keywords that we have the bandwidth to write SEO optimized blogs for and actually have a high probability to rank so that we get enough traffic and conversions which get us the ROI that we need. This strategy is the magic sauce that SEO professionals charge heavily for and I am now going to give away for free. Our research found 6 key factors for success which you can use like layers of a filter. You can put many keywords through this and only the best ones will make it through. So now I'll explain these factors one by one which may get technical but hang in there because understanding them can help you get massive growth. Search volume is the average number of times a keyword gets searched per month. Different tools give slightly different numbers because they all have their own methods. So take this number with a pinch of salt. There are three truths that you need to know about this number. Firstly, it shows the number of searches, not the number of people who searched. Many times people search for something multiple times and this can increase the search volume. Secondly, even if you rank first for a keyword, the maximum traffic you'll get will be under 30% of the total traffic. Thirdly, it's an annual average. So even if there are 120k searches for a keyword in December and none for the remaining 11 months of the year, its monthly search volume will still be 10k. So don't be surprised if you don't get traffic in those first 11 months. This filter is useful for two main things. First is filtering out super high volume keywords because they will be super highly competitive as well. Second is finding lower volume keywords. People often make the mistake of ignoring the low search volume, long tail keywords, but these can be very useful for easily getting some traffic because the user intent is very specific here. The next metric is clicks. Many people might search Google for something, but that does not mean that they all click on the search results and visit the top ranking pages. That's where the clicks metric comes in handy. It tells you the average number of monthly clicks on the search results for a keyword. Just take a look at a query like how much caffeine in coffee. Despite having a monthly search volume of 75,000, it only gets 16,000 clicks. Now, let's talk about traffic potential. Let's say that you're considering a keyword like side effects of coffee. This gets an estimated 1000 searches and 800 clicks per month. However, keep in mind that if you rank for this keyword, your page will probably also rank for all kinds of related keywords and synonyms like this as well. Since all these search queries mean roughly the same thing, estimating your potential search traffic from just a single query is a mistake. Look at the top ranking results to estimate the total search traffic of the topic. Next, keyword difficulty measures how difficult it will be to rank for a keyword by checking the number and quality of backlinks, number of referring domains and a bunch of other factors. 
Most tools have their own definition of how they calculate keyword difficulty. The one we use called Ahrefs base their keyword difficulty score on a number of unique websites linking to the top 10 ranking pages. Like here, you can see that this is the number of websites that need to link to your page to get you into the top 10 search results. These links are called backlinks, basically when other blogs link to your blog. You should see high difficulty keywords as link opportunities because the fact that the top ranking pages have so many backlinks means it's a link worthy topic. So if you nail this topic, it can attract a lot of backlinks for your website, which overall helps your website. Going on, CPC or cost per click refers to how much advertisers will pay to run an ad on that keyword, which is a good way to estimate a keyword's value. For example, the keyword office coffee has a relatively high CPC of $12. Lastly, the search intent of a keyword refers to finding out why someone is searching for a particular keyword. Understanding this will help us select the best type of content so that we can rank for that keyword. To find this, just type a keyword and now we will study the first 10 organic results. We'll note down the topics and subtopics for each. And after we've done this for all 10, we should have an overall idea what all points your article needs to include. All right, that was a lot of technical terms and we're done. But wait, 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 hold on. Before we move forward, here's a bonus tip. One of the main factors for ranking on Google is your website speed. Faster websites rank higher and convert better. There's now an easy free plugin that can make your website three to five times faster with just one click. You can find it at airlift.net. The next thing we need is a strategy to use our keywords to make our blogs rank. Step 3. How to use keywords to rank. We can do this by identifying what kind of blog we need to create to maximize our chances of ranking. This might mean creating a single blog to target a group of relevant keywords or creating separate blogs to target each keyword individually. How do we find this out? First, we identify the parent topic. Let's say you have the following keywords on your list. All of them are related to cold coffee. If you compare the search results for cold coffee with those of sugar-free cold coffee and you find that the same blogs don't turn up, then you can conclude that the keywords sugar-free cold coffee is not part of the broader cold coffee topic. So you'll need to create two separate pages if you want to target both keywords. Once you've identified the parent topic, it's important to analyze the search intent. For example, for sugar-free cold coffee, the top ranking pages are both informational and online shops. This is called a fractured search intent and it means that you can rank for this keyword with either type of page. The next thing to consider is the angle you're taking on a given topic. Adding your own unique spin can help you stand out in the search results and get more clicks, which can help you rank better. Till now, we've determined the right page type, format and angle, so it's time to start creating content that targets your keywords. It's very important that you add your keywords naturally and not stuff them in excessively as this can hurt your rankings because Google's algorithms are very good at catching this. The rule of thumb is that if another person reads your article, they should not find anything odd about a certain word recurring unnaturally. You can also use tools like this to get variations of your keywords so that your blog ranks for a wider range of search queries. Content strategy is a big cornerstone that helped us grow and get 150,000 visitors per month. Comment below if you want a video for that or if you have any doubt and I'll help you out. You can watch the next video in our SEO playlist right away.